Friends, family, please welcome the stage, your main stage host. Give it up for Steph Strickland! Atomic Blonde, DJ Elliott, thank you so much for being amazing. These guys bringing the house down. It is a pleasure to be back here as your main stage moderator for Awesome Con. It is, boy, the panel's already off to such a good start. And I cannot wait to introduce you to our next two guests. They are lovely, and as you know, if you've worked with me here, seen me on stage the past couple years, that's your microphone. That's your microphone. We're here for you. So please do stand up, get your questions asked, because... We want this experience to be all yours. Let's make it loud and proud right now for Charisma Carpenter and Amber Benson. Welcome, welcome to AwesomeCon. We're so thrilled that you're here. Thanks for having us. I'm just staring at myself. There's like a big monitor. I'm like, oh, a little, a little maybe it's a button. Just a little, <laughs> That's, a little cleavage there. It's but when we were backstage, I said, do you do you want us to take the monitor off? And I said, no, no, it's okay. I don't, I don't mind. And then it's there, and you can't stop staring at it. It's terrible. It's like my we have. I, I live with an eight-year-old, and she just stares at the mirror all the time and makes faces. And I was like, now I understand. Just like. Like, look, look at me, looking at me. That's so very meta. We had Sylvester McCoy up here last, and he raced around the place, and I was watching the videographers try to keep up with him. I just spent an hour getting dizzy watching that monitor while they were trying to track him down. He was all the way in the back. He didn't care. 20 <laughs> years. Yeah, right, right. 25 years um, of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Give it up. And do come on up to the mic. We do want to get to your questions. I like to get to them as quickly as possible. Can we do something first? Yes. This. I like to know your name. Your name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. And the team, the team supporting everyone, and we're very, very grateful for them making this event very accessible. Hi. How are you? Do you have a question? What's your name? Uh, my name is Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Go ahead. I have a question for Chris yeah, specifically. I was wondering, since you left before season six, what kind of song would you have wanted to sing in the music? <laughs> I don't sing. <laughs> and it's really one of the things that I really wish I could do, even a little bit. It's just... Let me give you an anecdote. I was working on some TV movie in Canada, and I was driving back to the hotel with the driver, and we had been driving together for about a week at this point, so there was some familiarity. And at one point, I'm singing along to this song, you know, in my joy, <laughs> and he, he says, he turns the music off, and he turns to be flat-faced, like just straight. Do you have pain when you sing? <laughs> I said, as a matter of fact, I do not. But you're about to. <laughs> no, but that just goes to show how you were all spared. <laughs> I was when I sang that song in the um, the first season of at the puppet show um, episode. You know. That was me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. When you when you're by yourself in the car, do you have or the shower or something? When you do sing and you're confident that no one's there to give you a hard time, do you have a go-to song? Now I'm curious. Lately, um, there's this well, there's this song called Brave um, by Woo! Sarah Morales, and I've been singing that a lot lately. See, I love it. Embrace it. You're not. Embrace the song. What about you? I have a choice. Yeah. It embraced me. <laughs> Do you have a go-to song? I, 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 I've been accused of just constantly singing at home and not realizing I'm Humming. doing it. Yeah. I'm a hummer singer. 
<laughs> that did come out right, did it? <laughs> and I, I have this weird thing where like if I hear a song, I'll, there'll be like a note that sounds like another song, then I'm singing that song, and it's just like a medley chain of weird connected things that make no sense. Um, I, we were in Starbucks and Bootylicious, I'm like, I'm now I'm Bootylicious. <laughs> so whatever song happens to be playing, that is my song of choice. I will sing it for hours, only the chorus, and not sing the words right. That makes karaoke very easy. You're like, just easy going. I'll yeah. just sing it all. Sing repeatedly it all. And mash it all together. We have a question over here. Hi. So I'm such a big stand of both of you. I love Buffy. How do you guys still look so incredible and fabulous still? <laughs> You'll get your 20 bucks later. Thank you. So I thought it was a travesty that Cordy and Tara never got a chance to meet on screen. How do you think they would have interacted had they met? We would have been lovers. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. But that just because it's sassy to say. <laughs> I, I think we would have gotten on. I, I think I think Cordelia was a complicated uh, character, complicated lady, and and Tara likes complicated ladies. <laughs> um, plus, she's hot as get all get out. Look at this. I mean, so, like, oh my gosh, when we were doing the Entertainment Weekly spread, my my um, my partner and I were were watching you do your solo shots, and both of us are like, how is it possible that she gets hotter? Like it's like you like. Every time, more. It's not, I don't understand. You made a deal with the devil. <laughs> it's true though. What was your name before you stepped away? What was your name? Oh, my name is Paul. Paul, Hi, that's, Paul. that's an awesome question. It, but it does kind of dovetail into something that I'm, I'm sure um, folks will want to talk more about, but that is some of the groundbreaking work that was done in terms of lesbian relationships and representation at a time when you just didn't see it. Um, when you look back on that now, did you know in the in the moment how profound it was, or was it just kind of like, oh, it's the thing we're just going to take me back to, to that? Um, well, we I, I didn't know. I, whoa, very echoey. Hello, hello. Um, I, I, Allison and I did not know that that was where the relationship was going at first. I was just supposed to do a couple of episodes. I was just going to be like the new friend in the the like witches club um, in the magic group. And uh, it just sort of snowballed from there. But I think that the intent had always been underneath to, to have them be together. They just wanted to sort of see how the chemistry was. Um, so, you know, we didn't go into it knowing that that's where we were headed. But once it became very clear that that's where we were going and Jaws took us aside and we had a conversation about it. I mean, I know we both felt like we were doing something that usually as an actor, you're like just regurgitating kind of bad dialogue. You know, that's just what you do for a living. And you're like, okay, how to make this better? With Buffy, it felt like we were doing something that was really important. It sort of transcended just like being actors on a television show. And I think we both understood that implicitly. Like once we were playing the characters in a relationship, um, I just did a panel for Outfest in Los Angeles, a virtual panel with, with, um, with Wilson Cruz. And uh, we were talking about, um, you know how how there wasn't there wasn't the representation in things like my so-called life and yeah friends it, exactly and then Buffy was like a continuation of that and uh, I think everybody who's been involved with with kind of knocking the glass ceiling and saying we're you know we need representation we need diversity in film and television um, I think we're all really honored and lucky that we got to be a part of that process um, so. Yeah. That's a fantastic answer. Thank you. Thank you. Let's come over here for a question to you. Hi. What's your name? Hi. Um, um, <laughs> it's um, a lot, right? I like it. It is. I feel it like is. God. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, name's, my name's Mike, uh, and I just wanted to ask, uh, I know with Buffy and Angel, um, both of you guys, your characters uh, had uh, an ending, um, and I just wanted to know, like, did you guys agree and were happy with the ending of each of your characters, or did, would you My response to that is well documented. <laughs> I'll, I'll feel that one. Because um, my, my answer is very, very, I've talked about it also, but um, 
they, like, they, they took me aside at the end of season five and they're like, so we've got this amazing news. It's so incredible. It's so great. We're going to kill your character. <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. I love that. That's great. It's, like, it's from the story point of view. It's so wonderful. Um, and I, I truly think from the story point of view, it makes 100% sense. I totally get it. It was kind of a bummer as you know, somebody who's part of a family of, of other creative people and a crew that you love. That you know, and a job that, that's paying your bills. You know, it's sort of sort of a bummer to lose that. But uh, yeah, I, I understood why. Uh, I, I yeah, and it kept getting pushed. It was supposed to be like at the beginning of season six, and they just kept shutting it down further into the the season because I think nobody really wanted to do it. You know, what you just said made me think of something. It's really interesting when a character's demise serves the show. <coughs> But what do you do when the character's demise does not serve the show? <laughs> yeah. um, so, there's that. <laughs> well, and then there's the whole trope of Kill Your Gays, which, which we were a part of um, with Buffy. And I think that, you know, it's continued. And, and I think a lot of times, you know, uh, creators feel like, oh, we're doing something, you know, very emotional and powerful. But I think they don't take into consideration the fact that, um, it is, it is, <laughs> it needs to be thought through. There has to be a real reason for you to do it, and if you can't give me a really amazing, unique reason, then you shouldn't do it, you know? And also doesn't serve a greater yeah, good or a social exactly, cause. Exactly, you know, you're going exactly. To... I, I don't think they should do it in general. <laughs> I, I like to keep the characters around, because we love them. So let's destroy that trope. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Hi, question to you. Uh, my question kind of already got asked a little bit. Um, I, I was going to ask how uh, how it felt to be a part of such, for Hannah specifically, um, how it felt to be a part of such a big uh, turning point, I feel like, in especially sci-fi and fantasy world and everything like that, um, with, with having a out, out there, out and proud lesbian relationship on the on the television screen, like uh, how that impact really felt to like you and the rest of the cast at the time. Well, I'll tell you straight up, we got censored. <laughs> oh wow! We weren't allowed to like kiss and do stuff. I mean, like Buffy and Spike are bonking on the the, the sarcophagus. Uh -huh. We're not allowed to do anything, basically. <laughs> And um, I think I was really, uh, I was frustrated by that, and I think mm -hmm. Allison was too. And then um, one, of, one of the guys from the art department took us aside, and he, he's gay, and he's like, look, I know that it's frustrating. You feel like they're, they're censoring the, like, the physical side. He's like, but the most important thing, and, and, it's, and it's happening in every episode, is you guys are a couple, you treat each other well, and you are in people's houses every week. And, and he's like, you are changing the dialogue around what it means to be LT, you know, LGBTQ plus in the world. He's like, when, when you are in someone's house, it ceases to be those people and becomes, oh, Tara and Willow, they're lesbians, oh, we like them. <laughs> you know, I was, I was at the National Portrait Gallery uh, writing this morning and there were, there were two older white men, both of them I think were, were gay men. They were talking about how when you know somebody who is LGBTQ+, you can't hate them because you know them. And I think so much was happening, like that there was such a revolution, there was so much change happening, mm -hmm. and people didn't, you know, they didn't know people who were different than them. And so these characters came into their homes and they identified with them and they loved them and it changed how they perceived people who were not, you know, just cisgender people. Um, mm -hmm. I was just going to add that I remembered watching a, some sort of, not a document, not a documentary, but I saw Dave, um, Dan Levi talk about Schitt's Creek and how important the gay relationship between them was, it was not meant to be something on the nose or meant or intended to tell any kind of specific story or be heavy, heavy handed in any particular way, but it was important to him to demonstrate love between two people that were of the same sex and to show 
and be for the audience to be witness to loving parents and accepting parents. And that was the only thing he was, you know, interested in doing. He didn't want to, to be some sort of show that was about causes or to be heavy handed with it. He just wanted to demonstrate what a loving relationship between two people can look like of the same sex and to show a family dynamic that is also supportive because whenever I've done research with the Gina Davis Institute, it, it's so important to um, read those statistics about representation and how vital it is to demonstrate positive tropes. I, tropes, let's stay away from tropes, but like if I were to, you know, say the positive examples conversation, okay. that um, it's important to have that representation um, and as diverse as possible, you know, when you watch a commercial and you see a black Rapunzel, you know, talking about whatever the Disney character is, it's important for that little eight-year-old girl to be able to look at the television and see herself. Because if you can see it, you can be it. Not that anybody wants to be Rapunzel, but, <laughs> but that you can identify and see yourself on the screen and that it affirms your existence and your you're valid and you're important and you matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and um, uh, I'm actually bi, uh, so like seeing that representation as uh, a kid and everything, even even though there wasn't like a lot of it at the time, um, was very uh, impactful for me. And I just want to say thank you. <laughs> Uh, no, thank you. Thank you for, for watching and for being a part of the Buffy family, because it is a family. All of us here were moved and, and, and touched by that show. It impacted me, it impacted you. Like, we all had this experience together. That's kind of amazing, right? Yeah. Like, it's crazy. And we're still here talking about it with joy, right? Thank you. Thank you. Panel. Well, this, and I remember I was saying backstage, I'm like, this is, we will get into it. And I love that. I know. But I just hope you guys are okay with it. It's, Where are the jokes? Where's the funny? I want anecdotes. But to your point, though, I, but one of the things you mentioned, Schitt's Creek, which was just fantastic because never was the relationship trotted out as such. It was just a, a part of the story. There's a moment in Game of Thrones when all women are ruling all the houses, and it's never, it's you're never beat over the head with it. It's just a fact where you go, wait a minute, they're they're all. We are all in charge. Um, and so I appreciate what you're saying from, from that aspect of it. Let's go over here to you for a question. Hi. Um, so I have a question, but I also want to comment. So Amber, you said something about the, the trend of killing gays. And you mentioned you're on a panel recently with Wilson Cruz. You made me think of uh, his character in Discovery. When, when they killed his character, I understood what they were trying to do, but there was never really anything that made sense for the reasoning. Yeah. Why at all? And I was really glad they brought it back because it just, it yeah. did not make sense to me at all, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's lovely, by the way. I can imagine. I'm a fan of his from Rent and Discovery and lots of things. So, um, my question actually gets a little bit to the right, so that would make Chris happy. Uh, I actually. <laughs> I, I'm not unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually. Sure, I got this is where I vibrate. <laughs> I actually was at your panel, but I was really happy to see that Amber was going to be here as well. And I also was thinking of the fact that uh, you guys, your characters never actually met on the show because you left after graduation, Florida left after graduation, and Angel started. So obviously you guys know a lot of people in common, so not a much surprise you guys met, but do you guys have a story or a memory of when you were first introduced? I remember meeting you for the first time. It was at some like event, some Buffy related event. Um, and it was like like a big like club kind of atmosphere. It was like the boom, 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 boom kind of and I just remember um, you came over and introduced yourself to me and you were so nice. Um, you're like, we are not working together, but I just want to say hi. I know you're on Buffy now and you were so sweet to me. Yeah. That was the first time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, charisma is fabulous. I am so, I'm so lucky to have, but no, I'm so lucky to have like this relationship with you outside of like, because we didn't work together, we didn't really have a relationship, and we've become friends after the fact, and I'm very grateful. Like, it's funny, like, you and Emma are like the two people that I, I spend the most time with outside of now, which is weird, but you know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't think, you know, yeah. 
You just don't know who's going to be the person you're like, you, I want to hang out with you, you're cool. <laughs> when you find out that you're working a, a con, do you immediately text each other or do you simply say like, we're working this one together? Like, how does that, how does that work? Um, I mean, I have that conversation with the, our personal appearance agent and then I'll say to her, do you want to go on a guided tour? <laughs> yeah. When are, where are we having dinner? Yeah. Do you want to do that? Like, I yeah. end up being the, um, She's the tour guide. She's the, she, you're Julie, I like right? To yeah. come, I like to come to a city, divide and conquer. I like to come, I like to drop my bags and go out into the city and stroll and take walks and experience you folks. We, ro we rode Lime scooters together once. That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> Who's a more aggressive Lime scooter driver? Oh, I, I'm like terrified. Think about it. I'm, like, I'm like an old lady. I'm like, don't go over the city. You gotta go, go on the sidewalk. You're just like, we're going. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty fearless. <laughs> she totally is. We should get you skydiving or something like that. I've done it. No. <laughs> no? That was a one and done? Tell me your skydiving story and then we'll come over here. Tell me, so you went skydiving. I have been skydiving. Once. Yes. And not your jam. Tell, tell me about it. Well, see, here's the thing. <laughs> had I gone again right after that, I probably would have done it again. But now that I've had distance from it, what I ended up doing was going to the New York, New York, and Las Vegas shortly, probably like three or four years after skydiving, and I was completely triggered by the roller coaster, um, the idea of the roller coaster. It started to set in, as soon as I put the seatbelts in, it started to set in that, that fear and, and the flop sweating and the shivering and like the whole physiological response system. It was like a, a total nervous breakdown. And um, I was like, I need out, I need out, I need out. And they tell me, like, I gotta get out, I can't do this. And they're like, sorry lady, you're in. <laughs> oh no, oh no. Like, oh my God. And I was married at the time and my husband and I were on it together. He's like, it's okay, it's gonna be okay. I'm like, this is not okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I don't skydive anymore. <laughs> you, know, that's, you know what, that's, I understand. Or roller coasters. Or I roller mean, coasters. To be fair, I will roller coaster, because if I am afraid to do something, then I will do it just because you're, I'm afraid of it. Yeah, you're counterphobic. You're like running toward the thing that scares the bejesus out of you. I mean, I'll, I'll head first into most things. Like, I will 100% commit and then have the remorse after that. <laughs> but I, at least I tried it. I feel that. I, I went skydiving once. Yeah. Let's go ahead. <laughs> Question over here. Hi, um, my name is Victoria. Yeah, I know. I'm only 4'11". It, it's fine. Um, <laughs> hey, Victoria. <laughs> um, so my question is for both of you. Both of your characters were part of some really, you know, interesting and impactful storylines throughout both Buffy and Angel. Which one was your guys' favorite to be a part of? No, that's a good question. It's nice, it's nice when they're taking a minute to think about it because it means they haven't been asked it, you know, a ton of times. So that's a great question. Uh, <clears throat> as, as painfully as it ended, I thought the addiction magic storyline was really interesting and thoughtful um, in, in so many ways. Um, obviously, spoiler alert, didn't go well. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But talk, you know, talking about addiction and the fact that something that a lot of us have struggled with in our lives, and it's it's really hard to to, to come to claw your way back to, to you know sobriety and normalcy. Um, and I thought, you know, it was a really interesting way to talk about it without talking about it in you know on a soapbox being didactic about it. Um, so, yeah. I think. I mean, I'm just pulling from the, the, or the ether at this moment. Um, I haven't given this a tremendous amount of thought, but the first thing that comes to mind is, in line with what she said, when Cordy first gets her visions, uh, the pain that it brings her, she hides. And she's hiding it from those that are closest to her. And she isn't able to be her authentic self. And, um, it kind of runs in, tan in tandem with what she was saying in that we are as sick as we are secrets. And when we repress certain sides of ourselves to people please or to somehow um, accommodate others, 
it's like setting yourself on fire to keep other people warm. It's not a good thing. It's always best to express what's going on with you and, and know who to trust that expression with, of course, which is not always easy. Um, but I think that that sort of storyline was, I think, a storyline that even today in my life uh, is relevant, you know, all these years later. I think that it's a universal thing, you know, it's never uh, a good thing for your spirit to repress sides of yourself that maybe you don't trust other people with or maybe you're aware that you're not safe to express that side of yourself. And that might be a very valuable thing to pay attention to and reconsider your social group or your family, find family and people that aren't your family. Greatest gift I ever give, I ever give myself and continue to give myself is therapy. <laughs> <laughs> That's an excellent question. Thank you, Victoria. Hi, we have a question coming over here. Yeah, my name is Jackson from my chair. I'm only about four ten five standing up. So <laughs> I don't do much better. Uh, my name is Burl. Thank you for being here. I'm a huge Buffy fan, but I'm getting older, so my mind is not as sharp when it comes to episodes. But I was represented when I think it was uh, Spike was injured. And like I think um, Angel said to him, shut up, spin, <laughs> during one of the episodes. My question is, I, I was inspired by Josh Whedon's work in Buffy the Vampire Slayer because it was an intelligent vampire show. And I'm a um, writer of vampire stories now. And I was just wondering, maybe you've been asked this, maybe you need the fanzine uh, thoroughly enough, what drew you to the roles that you got on Buffy and Angel, in your case, Charisma? And um, did you see the original film with Christy Swanson and Donald Sutherland? Thank you. Sorry, can you ask that again, but pull the mic back a bit? Oh, I'm sorry. Pull it this way? It's the echo. Okay. It's hard to... Okay. What drew, what basically, what drew you to the role? Of, of, of Cordelia and um, what, what did you see the original movie? Did you see the original movie with uh, Christy Swanson and yeah. Donald Sutherland? I did. In the theater when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, what drew me to Cordelia? Well, work. Um, <laughs> you know, I was in my 20s, I was just starting out on the show. I mean, uh, starting out in the business. Were you going to say something? No, I was just saying, uh, if you bring your mic up, just so. Oh, so I need to bring it up. I just, uh, <laughs> we, we, we do know, we've discussed it in the back. We know it's boomy, and we're sorry, because it does make it hard for us to hear up here. They're trying to fix it. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so I think when, at the time I was in my early 20s, mid-20s, uh, I had been on one or two shows before that, and of course you always want a series or have the privilege to be on a long-running television series, especially one that ends up being critically acclaimed. So that's really what I want to impart to you is when you're just starting out, it's really not <laughs> in your best interest to be super selective about what you're on, right? So you have to consider at the time, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was the name of the show, on a network that had one other show called Seventh Heaven on it with a mascot that was a frog, a dancing frog with a hat and cane. So you have to realize, like, beggars can't be choosers and we're just shooting in the dark at this point, right? So there was no real great forethought in this, you know, job or, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just work. You want to work. Um, and it just turned out really, really well. And I'm very grateful to this day. I will never not be proud of the work that I did on that show or that the work the crew members did, my fellow actors did, and the writers gave. There, I will never, ever, I will ho always want to be Cordy. I'm going to get emotional. I will always be Cordy to anybody. I will always answer to Cordy. <laughs> no, it's fine. So, yeah, thank you for, you know, showing up all this time later. I love that. No, it's good. I mean, I... <laughs> Hi, a question over here. Oh, um, uh, uh, oh, I was just going to uh, say that it, it's similar to, to Charisma. You know, you just, as an actor, you're sort of 
thrown into things and you don't know what it's going to end up being and this turned out to be something way beyond. Um, but I loved, I loved Tara because she was shy. I really appreciated that about her. So when I was a kid, I was really, really, really shy. Like I was a kid hiding behind my mom's leg. And, and actually theater and performing is what, what changed me because I realized I could put on that mask and I could just put myself out there and it didn't matter, like if someone didn't like me or didn't like, I was like, well, that's that character. Or that's, you know, you know, and it, and it taught me how to like actually put myself out there into the world and to be extroverted because inside I'm still very mushy and shy and nervous and terrified of rejection and how do I make myself smaller, you know, but you put on the face and here we are. And you drink a lot of coffee too, that helps. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Hi. Hi, um, my name's Paige, and I was wondering what the atmosphere was like working on the show, uh, Buffy, especially with you, Charisma, because you did Angel as well, kind of a transition over from Buffy. I'm happy to answer that for you, but one second. What is your dog's name? Browning. <laughs> like, she's named after the shotgun. I got her when she was named like that. What's her name? Browning. Browning. And a German Shepherd. Yes, ma'am. Feeling a little anxious? Uh, I'm actually visually impaired, so she kind of helps me is get she, around. Is she feeling anxious? I don't know. I guess yeah. she is. Yeah. Well, I just want to love on your dog, but I know that's not appropriate, but I'm giving this dog a big, big hug right now. Well, I can, her always, face. I can always let you get let her get, let you give her a treat on Sunday. <laughs> I welcome that opportunity. Uh, beautiful, beautiful dog. Thank so, I'm um, glad you also have her in your life. Um, so to answer your question, what was the difference between Buffy and Angel? Like, what was the atmosphere like oh, working on different. that? And especially for uh, Amber with Buffy, what was the atmosphere like for you guys? <laughs> well, um, just to start with, it was a large cast on large cast on Buffy and a smaller cast on Angel. Uh, lots of personalities and very co-ed on Buffy. Very male on Angel. I was like the only female cast member initially, and there was only really like maybe a handful of women, and on the actual stage was just me and Scripty, which was a lovely woman named Jane. Uh, so that was very uh, apparent um, back in the day, but I appreciated having more responsibility in terms of carrying my weight as an artist and getting to explore the character more and having the opportunity to flesh her out to be more three-dimensional uh, all positive things in that sense um let's see well I, I came into it four seasons in so there was a like there was a big family dynamic like the crew the crew was incredible the crew was fabulous and they worked so hard. They would come in way before the actors got there and they left way after we left. And I mean, they were, they were there all the time. Because the, Buffy, and I don't know if Angel was like this, but I imagine it was, you're there all day and night. And we're talking 17 hour days. Yeah, I do just want to add to that. Exactly that is um, in, as it relates to the crew. The crew is first to go, last to leave. They don't get the trailers like the actors do to get between scenes to go like sleep, Hello. take a nap, mm -hmm. decompress, to answer emails, whatever. Um, it, it was an incredibly tireless, it was a very challenging show because we had special effects, we had stunts, we, you know, it was a nighttime show. So this, these particular shows in general were particularly more demanding than the average oh, yeah. show. Yeah, no, I mean, it was it was it was nuts actually what they had to do. Um, yeah, no, that I remember during, when I was on when I had first gotten you know I first was at the show like someone on a different uh, crew on a different show had been killed because they fell fallen asleep driving, and so yeah, I mean that's what the crew has to like they, these guys and gals they were there so early and they lived far away a lot of times because you know. Like sometimes an hour away because you know to be able LA is very expensive and to be able to afford a house and a, a nice school system for their kids, you know they made the sacrifice to drive in an hour from Santa Clarita, you know, so it was crazy. Um, but but it was uh, so it was like stepping into a family 
and I, I, you know, it took me a little while to sort of find my place, um, but eventually I did, and um, I think like everything in this life, there, there is good and bad, and they can coexist together, you know, particles and waves. Um, <laughs> coexisting at the same time, you can be both at the same time, and I think you know there was a lot of a lot of stress on that set, but there was also a lot of love, and and I, I have friends from from that time in my life that have been with me for 20 plus years. So, um, but it was it was crazy to be able to do all that that neat special effects stuff, like floating roses and all the crazy vampire effects. I've never been on a set like that before where you did all that crazy stuff. It was really, really cool to be a part of that, to breathe in all the smoke that they would waft into the, st the stages, so it was always smoky. You're just like, <laughs> <laughs> um, That's what I think of that $12 a day hazard pay. That yeah. was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, for you your so much. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm all right. Hey. I'm Shannon, I'm from Maryland. And I was wondering what your favorite funny memory of recording Buffy or Angel was. <laughs> <laughs> Alternately, if you would like to tell us your favorite part of like exploring DC, since you are a tour guide connoisseur. <laughs> did you read my post on Instagram? I did not. Well, I just went there, told you all about it. <laughs> Charisma Carpenter. I, I, took, I took one of the photos. <laughs> she did. And you're in I'm, one of them. I'm in one of them. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm terrible. I'm the worst person to ask these questions to because I know, like, I don't want to get the same answer, but I don't know. The funnest part, I, honestly, I don't know about a particularly funny time. I think it was fun to try to eat the grossest possible stuff before a kissing scene because we just, you know, that kind of stuff. There you go. Um, you know, saran wrapping toilet seats. Yeah, I, Nikki, I would do that too. Um, you know, and I don't know, just immature goofball stuff. When you say gross food with like garlic and tuna, and then you're like, oh no, yeah, box and bagels with red onion and capers. <laughs> Dude, that's even worse. Fish, I thought I had onion, <laughs> the works. I won, by the way. <laughs> of course you did. Of course you did. No one ever plays jokes on me. I think it's because I'm too earnest looking. I'm like, oh, someone ever so sweet. She doesn't understand. I didn't really get pranks. But I did the pranking. So you, I know you have a very imaginative <laughs> side too. Oh, yourself. I could totally come up with good ones. But I'm, I'm, I'm too nice. I like, I don't want to I'm too nice. Me. What am I? I <laughs> I'm just like, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm so worried it'll like backfire and then like it'll that hurt. That does happen. Yeah, that's, that's my fear of like, I don't want it to backfire on me. But it's then. just Nikki, so. <laughs> that's true. You prank the wrong person. I think it's safer. <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. I'm not right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, question over here. Hi, I'm Alexandra, and and I was wondering if you could tell us, please, about any upcoming projects that you're working on or excited about, whether they're acting or some other creative pursuit. Ooh. You first. Me first. Well, there's one thing you I can't. can't talk about I can't talk about you it. Can't yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I am, uh, I, I write now primarily, I don't really act anymore. Um, acting is lovely, but, but um, yeah, writing is nice because you can do it in your pajamas. <laughs> uh, and so I'm, I'm writing, a, I, I just wrote a, a, a lifetime thing that might have some members of uh, the cast of uh, Beverly Hills 90210 possibly. But I can't say who or what, and it may, you know, you write it and who knows if they make it, but, um, and, uh, and I'm writing something for Hallmark. And we just, uh, yeah, we, I wrote a pilot for my witches books that we went out with during the pandemic with Catherine Hardwick attached to direct. And sadly, it didn't get set up, but it was really fun to get to, you know, go through that process of pitching a, a whole TV show and all of it on Zoom. So, you know, I did it in my pajamas, but I put a jacket on. You know. <laughs> I have a really, I have a really snazzy robe and uh, it looks like I'm not like, very cool in this race, but it's like pajama robe, but it looks nice from the top up, so I wore it's that. It's a duster now. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I was wearing my cool duster. My, 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 uh, my, auntie, my auntie Jean, who passed away a number of years ago, it was hers, and so I like to wear it and think of her and do pictures for TV shows in it, because I'm sure she, from Huntsville, Alabama, by way of like war brides in England, really imagine that's what's going to happen to her robe. Um, so yeah, so I'm just, I'm writing. I am acting still, and I guess, is today the second or the third? Today's the third. So yesterday on Pure Flex, um, the new show called Going Home talks about um, hospice care and you know transition and all that deep stuff. Um, I'd like to hope that this show is a turning of the times. Um, I'm very proud to have been a part of it because my friend Dan Merchant created it and sold it. Sold a show about dying people during the pandemic. I mean, wow, wow. wow. Um, you can do it. <laughs> you, if he can do that, you can do it. So if you have any aspirations to do that, it's possible. Um, I've also co-created a couple of projects also um, that haven't gone the distance yet, but I'm in that process. Nice. I have an upcoming episode of Dynasty that should be fun. I think it airs July 8th on CW, um, I don't know, other stuff. Just living it up. <laughs> living it Thank living you for life. your question. We have time for one more, and I'll tell you, I do virtual cons, obviously, also because of the pandemic, and they were all in my pajamas. So this part was all dressed up, and the rest of me was not. Hi, question for you. Hi, my name is Alyssa. Um, I'm curious, given that uh, since Buffy went off the air, the public perception of Joss Whedon has... Uh, no, 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 we won't do that question. No, no, no. <laughs> no let's, do you have another one? Oh, okay. Um, uh, yeah, I was just going to ask how I can be a, a fan anyway, but if that's... Something I'm not supposed to ask about. I, will I think it's a it's a tough about. one to tackle, and I, I appreciate the as someone who has uh, followed his career and who has uh, liked his work. Um, it's something that I just want to be mindful of, uh, and I I do appreciate what you're saying, right? It's trying to unpack the difference I, between I, someone. Yeah, I would just say that like Buffy was created by a ton of people. You know, um, it is a show that transcends all of that stuff and I think being a fan of the show is not a just not doing a disservice to, to feminism or me too or any of that stuff um, I think the show is its own thing and to love the show is a wonderful thing and I know charisma and I both feel like you guys and you're in our lives because of the show and that's what's really important and people have found friend groups and people got married and have kids because of Buffy you know, Buffy is a beautiful, wonderful thing, and nothing can touch that. Yeah. That's right. And here we are, 25 years later, together as part of the Buffy family. It's like, I don't know how it how is that possible. How is that possible? It feels like yesterday. Because it was, it brought some magic. Like you said, you took the job at the time, and here we are all these years later. We are so grateful for your time coming out to this con, touring the city, posting about it on Instagram. Thank you for your photography assist on that. Glad you're in one of the photos. Please, everyone, let's give it up for Amber Benson and Teresa Carpenter. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us for a look back.